in some cases, I, I can imagine that uh, dancing inspired the music. In other places, you can see where uh, music inspired the dancing. The best music is the music that is written for dance because dancing enhances music. Dancing enhances. Oh, let me write that down, please. Black teenagers who danced it in the late 1920s called it the Lindy Hop. It was yet another outpouring of that era of creative ferment known as the Harlem Renaissance. In the nightclubs and ballrooms of Harlem, a new dance to go with a new kind of music. The new music was called Swings, and it's still being danced by some of the men and women who helped make it famous. People like Norma Miller and Frank Manning. Frank and Norma are now in their 70s. Not quite as acrobatic as they used to be, but every bit as smooth. year friend. <laughs> no, no. Now here's a young lady. When she started dancing, she knew that she was going to be a dancer. I mean, from the time she was growing up, Norm always felt that she was going to be a dancer. And she carried that right through Lindy Hop. Frankie Manning was the best Lindy Hop ever. Best swinging dancer ever. And look good. See, the point is, swing has a certain look. Look at Frankie. That's how the dance is supposed to look. Up until now, I mean, she's the grand lady of dance. I mean, she's a wonderful friend. She's, uh, she, normally she's something else, man. <laughs> yeah, we've been friends since, since 1934, and we are still friends. One of the major contributors to the development of the Lindy Hop was Frankie Manning, who, with a group of other dancers, performed on tours that took them far from Harlem ranging all the way to the Moulin Rouge in Paris, sharing the spotlight with jazz greats such as Duke Ellington. <laughs> Developed and perfected by the young black dancers at Harlem's Savoy Ballroom, where Frankie Manning was part of the scene. The Savoy, yes, it was the center of the universe because uh, people would come from all over the world just to see the Lindy Hop. And when you came into the Savoy and you hear and you hear one of those bands swinging in there, I mean, you immediately you got into the mood. Also, you was a swinger too. You know? People used to stand outside the Savoy Ballroom just to watch the people go in, and they came there with the best they had. You would walk in, and this is this long ballroom, and from one end of the ballroom to the other were people dancing. There is rhythm and the Lindy Hop at Harlem's Land of Swing, homeland of happy feet. I think I was in my 20s before I realized the rest of the world didn't dance. I just never knew anybody who wasn't a dancer. Loose jointed girl. Void covered a whole city block on Lenox Avenue between 140th and 141st Streets. Employed two bands at once so that the music need never stop. And was so popular with dancers that its maple and mahogany floor had to be replaced every three years. Just 50 cents on weeknights, 75 cents on Sundays. The Savoy was called the home of happy feet and offered depression-ravished Harlem a respite from its troubles. The windows was wide open. 
And so the music can come out, blast right into our living room. Every night we heard this marvelous music. And in those days, in the summer, the fire escape was where you sat to be cool. There was no air conditioning, nowhere. So by sitting on a fire escape, and our fire escape faced the back windows of the Savoy Ballroom. And you ever see shadows when people dance past the windows? You can see figures dancing to that music. And my sister and I would respond to what we saw in the windows of the Savoy, and we would get into the living room and dance to some of the best bands in the world. Right here is where the Savoy was, right here. And you walked in there this way. See, now it took it that block to that block. The, was the, the length of the Savoy Ballroom it was a whole block long. So you can judge from there, from this street here to that corner. That was the length of the ballroom over on this side. Here was where the, the Lindy was created. Here's where all swing dancing began, right here. All the well-named bands, the good bands played at the Savoy. The, I, I understand that they had over 250 bands that played at the Savoy during the period of time that the Savoy was open. They had a, like, like first time I went there, they had Chick Webb was there, and they had Teddy Hill there. Now the Savoy, speaking of Savoy Ballroom, Savoy Ballroom was, a, was one block long and one block wide. And it hold about 2,000 people on the dance floor. And each and every one of them, each and every single one of them would be doing the Lindy Hop. <laughs> They'd be swinging, Jim. And you walk in the Savoy Ballroom and you see all this going on, man. And you became a swinger right away. And you see them people out there dancing, man. They'd be just bobbing up. Even the floor used to be bouncing, you know. <laughs> floor say, yeah, I want to get a little bit of this myself, you know. The floor be bouncing, boy, and the people was bouncing on the floor, and the music is swinging, Jim. And you get out there, and you hit that floor, boy, and you just be doing the same thing. You be dancing, boy, you be swinging. And, boy, and uh, I had the fortune enough to uh, get very friendly with, uh, with Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah, she and I started calling each other sisters and brother, you know. So she'd be up there singing, and when she finished singing, I walk up to her. I say, hey, sis. She said, yeah, bro, where you at? I said, come on down, let's dance. She said, okay. And she come down, man, and, and Ella and I, we'd be swinging. Ella could dance. She could swing, too. When I say she could swing, I mean anywhere. I mean, she starts singing, you know she can swing. And she could swing on the floor just like she could swing with her voice, Jim. And she was, she was wonderful. She was a wonderful lady. And that, you asked me about the times that that... <laughs> <laughs> About a half an hour ago, yeah, okay. Well, anyway, that's what it was like back in those days, Leonard. I mean, you, you go to nightclubs, you go to theaters, you go to ballroom dances, and there was entertainment all over in, in the 30s. And because it was a depression time, and, you know, people, they feel, they be working like the whole week long, you know, and the, when Saturday and Sunday come, they, they want to, you know, like get rid of all of that, you know, they want to get rid of the stress and strain. So they would go out dancing, or they would go to a theater, or and watch a movie in, in, in vaudeville. And they would go to be entertained. And, and dancing was one of the cheapest things to do. Because you could go to dance for 35 cents and you could stay there from 10 o'clock at night to 4 o'clock in the morning. And dance the big name bands. So it was... I'm sorry you guys wasn't there. <laughs> you know, somebody asked me, they said, Frankie, if you could go back in time, what would you do? I say, if I could go back in time, I'd take me a video camera. <laughs> so I could videotape all this going on and then bring it back down here. And I say, see what I was talking about? <laughs> I would love to do that. Everybody came to the Savoy Ballroom. It was the home of black dancing. It was the home of swing. And everybody wanted to learn swing. You had to come to the Savoy Ballroom. It was the dance that was created in Harlem. It was the most American dance that has ever been created in the history of dance. And that's the Savoy. Savoy, everybody came. That's why everybody came to Harlem. But it was the first time where black and white mixed for the first time in a, in a public place. Other than that, it was not like white people coming watching black people dance. It was everybody being part of it, and it was the first integrated um, public place in Harlem, in America. 
The Savoy was a place for dancers. I mean, for people who want to dance and want to have a good time. Not that they necessarily wanted to uh, be professional dancers. It was just that they went up there because they would have such a good time. We gave America swing. We gave the world swing. And if nothing else, today you got swing in the world because of us. And I tell everybody that. So I can sit down and say, well, got to be something all right with it. <laughs> Wasn't bad for Count Basie or Duke Ellington, Chick Webb, Louis Armstrong. I mean, that ain't a bad group to be hanging out with. We even had white bands to come to the, to the uh, uh, Savoy Ballroom. That was extraordinary. Charlie Barnett, um, um, uh, uh, Artie Shaw. <laughs> Benny, oh yeah, well that was the big, that was the big event, Benny Goodman, when Benny Goodman came to the Savoy, it was, whew, it was hot. You can dance the Lindy when you're 70. You can't do a lot of other dances when you're 70, it's impossible. You can always swing, because swing is perfect. Dancing gives the world pleasure. And who was it created by? You still have a few of those left that were part of the creators. All of this went down 50 years ago. For something to sustain 50 years, it had to have a lot of substance. We like to say the Savoy Ballroom was a dancer's heaven, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, like when everybody say, well, when they die, I want to go to heaven. You know, like, well, I say, well, when I die, I want to go to Savoy. Because <laughs> that's my heaven.